quick intro, stay tuned. Hope your day is going well. Phelps got the dog. Focus the main boss, John Doe. Oh. Your, your last life, Scope. right here <laughs> hey what's going on folks it's scope coming again for another video for new world now this specific video is going to involve the dungeon called the depths so if you're looking for any sort of information on that video or that dungeon you might find some helpful pertinent information in this video because the way I like to do my videos is try and give tips to other players and help other players along, but also show pretty good footage. And if you're in that into that sort of thing, then go ahead and subscribe, hit the like button, and comment, you know, how your day was or whatnot. Because most importantly around here, care about y'all. I hope you guys are staying safe, staying happy, staying healthy, staying strong. But I got a lot of footage for you that is coming up. I've got all the footage from... Uh, launch day all the way up until level 40 all of it and I'm telling you hard drives are filling up quick but um, I think I'll be able to piece together some some pretty neat footage of all of that and I'm thinking do a uh, condensed leveling uh, basically how it all went and there's some interesting stuff especially it being launch day so you know, I'm stoked. I'm enjoying this game. Not many complaints. Uh, they need to work on some things like um, server queues, maybe server caps and stuff like that. But in terms of mechanics and how the game is actually playing, it's good to go. And I'm enjoying it. Uh, small tinks and kinks and stuff like that. Cogs need to be turned. 
Um, maybe type in the comments what you think. If you could change three things about New World right now, if you were in charge, what would you change? Because um, that stuff's interesting. Everybody's got a good point, but at the same point in time, you know, this is old Jeff Bezos' company, so, you know, whatever happens, happens. But I'm enjoying the moments that we have now and uh, the fact that, hey, it exists. It's a good game. It's, it's a lot of fun, and uh, I'd like to share these moments with you. Anyways, uh, I'll be catching up with y'all later on in the video with some helpful tips, pointers, and things that I thought were, okay, uh, I need to know that for this dungeon, so uh, those will be the things that I try and expose and, and help y'all through. If you know any information that we are missing in this video, please, 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 um, all love in the comments and hopefully some toxicity as well because you always love that, but comment and let us know if we were missing anything any way to help um others get through this stuff it's awesome but anyways y'all take care i'll touch base you later on in the video best wishes thanks Alrighty, so here's the scoop there's from what i know two main names in this dungeon however there's a couple other silly extra um names and mobs that can drop loot this being one of them uh this is boar, and he's pretty much just burning turn, so no real worry here. Burn him, turn him, and loot. If you're having issues with this mob, then you're not going to be able to get through the later mobs. Obviously. All right, so after working your way down the hallways, taking out boar, and taking out all the tendrils, finally, it's about to be go time. Man, some dope white drops are getting out of these chests. This is how we feel. Alrighty, now with clearing all the hallways and taking out boar and the tendrils and all that stuff, you're finally met with your first challenge. By now it almost feels like the end of the zone, doesn't it? This is Archdeacon Azamel, and she's got quite a strap. Here's the scoop, during the entire fight she's going to be spawning adds, and at one point in time she's going to be spawning, well I guess we'll call them mines, right? Okay, so start off burn and turn and you're going to stick her down to about 60 or so percent if I remember correctly. There's two times that this happens that you're going to need to keep this in mind. So two different shifts. The first shift when it happens basically she'll stop taking damage, she'll go immune. And what you have to do is send, uh, for me I was solo healing so I went with one of my DPSers over and uh, you'll see on the floor there's little telepads. Uh, one's to the east, I think the other's to the west, um, wherever it is, you'll see it. I mean, it's, you're going to wipe once or twice to figure this out. Anyways, go through the telepad. Once you get in there, uh, the rest of the group is still surrounding Archdeacon Azamela, taking out the mines that spawn. Taking out these mines help a ton because they greatly reduce the amount of AoE damage that the group is going to take, and those who are at the pillar taking out the pillar. So. When it starts, let's say 60%, you take your DPS and your healer, hopefully maybe you got two. So that way one healer gets to stay with the group. Anyways, they run to the portal, they port in, and there's going to be two adds in there. You're going to kill both of the adds, and then you are going to hit E on a bulb that's over there, and then you're going to port backwards, or port back. And then you're going to fight her again down to about like, I don't know, 30%, and it's going to happen again. This time being different, there's two of them. So 
get both your guys, run to the east first, take that, take right, down yeah, the ads, down. hit E on the thing, and then teleport back, and then run to the opposite end, teleport, take down the ads, hit E, and then come back and finish her off. Unfortunately for us, it didn't entirely go as planned, and we wiped a lot, but here's how we got through this specific one.
Alrighty, and now onto the final boss. This is Commander Thorpe. Now, um, disclaimer on this one, our group, this specific group, and this specific recording does not get through this fight. It is a little bit of a difficult fight. We came in a bit under leveled and uh, we weren't all, so to speak, on the same page. And of course, we were not all in a Discord because it was, like I said, pickup group and my in-game chat is not working. With those variables going against us, we ended up obviously failing this fight, but we did get some good reconnaissance. And since then, I have gotten through the fight. So I feel I can give you enough input while, al while also showing you this clip um, to help get you through the fight if a couple things are followed. Now, so the strat with this one, and it, like I said, before I get into it, I didn't want to clip this out and then throw uh, the clip of us getting through it, uh, cause that wouldn't have been authentic, right? All of a sudden the group makeup changes and, and you're going, wait, 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 what's going on here? So instead of going through all that, I figured we'll make more content, right? I'll show you this one, show you that it's tough talk to you about it and hope that you get it through get through it and then in another video you can see us getting through it um but yeah wanted to keep it authentic anyways now for the meat and potatoes this specific fight is pretty darn tough if you can get through it you can get through it and it's not that tough but if you can't obviously it is tough because you could <laughs> it's pretty basic it makes sense actually if you think about it but so the strat for this one is going to be that your tank is gonna need a little bit of time, a little bit of time to adjusting to this one. In this specific fight, I do think that it will force a tank to be able to tank correctly in this game, uh, utilizing a lot of the actual block and uh, yes, yeah, standing at the mob and legitimately taking hits with your your shield up. Uh, the tanks that I see get through this successfully tend to do that. The tanks that I see fail this tend to just try and fight the mob and you shouldn't be necessarily doing that as a tank now keep in mind there are a couple things that are going to be happening as you will see in the video of this fight uh, one of them is the laser beams and another is some ads so being able to knock out these two things as variables that would kill you sorry about that ping someone's messaging me if you can knock out those two variables of things that will kill you that's going to safety belt your group through two hard times and allow you to survive and get through those those odd uh, prerequisite checkpoints, uh, speed bumps, I guess we'll say, and you'll be able to get through the rest of the fight easily. So what I mentioned, the laser beam and the ads. So you're like, what, what's going on? Okay, at one moment during the fight, well, multiple times, Commander Thorpe will do an emote. And I forget what the emote is exactly, but after the emote, he begins to shoot laser beams. And if you are hit by this laser beam, um, it will kill you. Now, so how do you get away from it? Well. Number one, the best way is the first thing I mentioned, getting your tank used to this fight. If the tank has the mob positioned correctly, the laser beam will just go pretty much nowhere into the wall that, that the mob is looking at. So if your mob has, if your, if your tank has the mob facing away from the group, that's what you want. Um, because the laser beam is a frontal cone, so to speak, of damage that it does sliding right to left or left to right, whatever, it slides it's not, it doesn't go 360. So if you get it facing the correct way, it's only gonna blast that way and you can avoid the rest of it. Now, for some reason, if you were out of position and or your tank had the mob out of position, how do we mitigate this laser beam now? Well, it's pretty easy. Lay down and let the laser beam just simply go straight over you. Okay, so now you have the strat of the laser beam and you shouldn't be dying on that. If you do, you done messed up. Um, a Ron and you need to fix yourself and adjust yourself because you shouldn't be dying on that It's a it's a simple speed bump where they want to catch you up on but don't allow them to the second is the ads You're gonna be scared because all of a sudden you're dealing with this name That's really tough and now these ads appear and good gosh, they're running all over the place Just burn them quick have everyone focus on them right in the middle have your aoe's like up and ready to go To where the second that they spawn you just completely melt them and your healer, which in this case, in all cases, is, is me. Um, well, I'm not healing you, but you know what I mean. For me speaking, it's me healing, and I just have my heals up ready to go. The ads aren't an issue. They burn quick. They're gone. The ads come uh, numerous times throughout the fight, but I believe the first time they do come, 
is after he heals. And he heals after you get him to 1% or you, you drop him and he'll do a full heal and uh, those ads will come. Like I said, just deal with them, get it, got it good. And then, so if you're not dying on the ads and you're not dying on a laser beam, then you've survived up into that point dealing with him and him alone. Just keep dealing with him and him alone and rinse repeating that and working it. Now, there, was, there is one other small thing that can help you get through this fight. Now your response could be, but I can't dodge. Neither can I, I, I can't roll, but I can dodge just enough to where when he targets specifically me, I can get out of his way. Now, I do as a healer have a couple extra things that I can do, for example, in Tomb, which is my ice gauntlet thing uh, that's not entirely heal oriented. So maybe if your mage is rolling ice gauntlet, they can use their uh, invulnerability in Tomb and that stops you from being hit by either the laser beam or his focus and, and can save you. But even if you don't have those things, as long as you're dodging when he targets you, you're good to go. Just get out of his area and uh, kind of keep moving around if, if you are not the tank, right? If you are the tank and you start getting bopped up hard, run around for a minute. You're good to go. Let your healer catch up. Let their cooldowns chill out. And then the second that you see the heal circle go down, just get into it. You're good to go from there. Anyways, I hope this video has been helpful. And if it has, please, please, please hit that like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. And uh, most importantly, though, way more important than that, I hope you guys have been staying happy, staying healthy, staying strong, and staying safe. Cheers.